Kamar Joba, good afternoon, um, good morning, or for someone, good evening. Um, I'm Otto Nemsadze, I'm co-founder of Tbilisi Architecture by Neo, and I'm really happy to be here today with you live to present first digital project in the frames of second architecture by Neo. This year's architecture spinal theme is commonness, and as you might already know, they, we, we operate under the name, what do we have in common? Um, as some of you might know, in, uh, in summer of running year, we had an open open call in four categories to choose the projects to be presented on Tbilisi, during the Tbilisi Architecture Biennial. And one of the categories was the digital projects. And, uh, uh, and uh, surprisingly, we have received a massive amount of the applications and the jury had to work quite hard to choose the best out of the best. Um, I'm really proud that uh, the project that we're going to present today was selected by, by the jury. Kumbima Collection of Thoughts is, frankly saying, one of my favorite projects in our calendar. And I'm really happy to be, to be representing it today to, to you. Um, as said, uh, uh, this is, uh, the name of the project is Kumbima Collection of Thoughts. And this is um, uh, one of the few projects uh, that focuses on sound insulation, sound experience. And the project that you're going to see today and experience from today is really uh, the project that, uh, by the, as authors say, reveals the society. Today we're going to see uh, and experience the project of the society that uh, uh, Albanian society, but during the conversation, we might find quite a lot of similarities, common as well. Uh, what we're going to do today, right now, is that we're going to show you um, a video prepared by, by the team, where they reflect their ideas, where they tell us how they worked on the project. And later on, we will return um, live here with the team, and we'll have question and answer sessions and also we'll have some interactions between us and them. In normal times we would have this uh, this presentation, this this communication in Tbilisi in physical space, but I mean it's not possible right now. We have to use the digital space to to find the solution. But I really hope that in the uh, near future, maybe next year We'll have this opportunity to present the project to the architecture pioneer. We'll have the opportunity to pre present the project physically. Um, the project will and is already open on our webpage uh, on 47th floor. So, but before going to the webpage, let's all, I invite you all to, to watch the video and then reflect on live discussions. Thank you very much. Now we can stream the video. Definition of kumbima. Kumbim, a noun, meaning a prolonged ringing that seems to come from afar, from hitting something. Echo sound, reverberation. Echo, the sound of a drum. Repercussion of a sound, etc. Hello from Kumbima team. We are a group of people from various disciplines composed mainly of architects, but also artists, a sound engineer, a programmer and a writer. Most of us collaborate often on architecture projects and expand it here to join forces and explore different aspects of Kumbima. Hello, this is Simona from Tirana, a contributor to the discipline of architecture as well as Kumbima team. We are very happy and excited to be part of the Biennale of Tbilisi this year. And we are here uh, introduced with a project which is called Kumbima. We started Kumbima to bring forward a phenomenon, a peculiarity, a quality of Albanian context via a sonic experience. And this experience is differently um, one of mutuals, of commons, that echo in our daily life, although we might not be aware of it. In this audible journey, we try to focus on the shared commons and of mutuals. Sometimes uh, may they be of choice or sometimes not. We navigate through the city following sonance sources that perform and uh, sometimes dominate with noble protagonism our soundscape. 
In a few steps around Tirana, you can clearly hear the bells chime, the minarets call, the choir singing, urban traffic bursting, and even children playground blaring around our uh, environment. And often they are placed in such high proximity that sound as they are playing uh, simultaneously with each other. But behind this naive curtain or this naive um, displaying of the background, Kumbima echoes not merely as a daily experience, but tries to bring, to scratch a bit, to, to open a bit this curtain and bring together uh, voices that maybe are not obvious, uh, maybe that are historical but also contemporary, and perhaps uh, that are present and maybe not present. So in a way, trying to display a true reveal of our society um, today. In most of uh, communist countries, as well as in uh, Albania, uh, countries that went out of the Eastern Bloc uh, back in the 90s, Albania also went through a quite drastic uh, moment of change, quite radical change, actually. It saw an aggressive urban growth and a shift from collective sense to an individu individual sense. And although this individual sense uh, dominated um, in many aspects of our life, there is one particular aspect that drifted quite apart from it. It went in antagonism with the general approach of this individualistic sense, and this was religion. So from a constitutionally atheist country, Albania became a ground for complete freedom and manifestation of it in public space. So in this sense, Kumbima uh, praises sounds uh, in, a, in an attempt to sculpt a culture that is continuously in a built, rebuilt mode. Hi, I'm Irida Supo, I'm an architect based in Tirana and part of the Kumbima team. I would like to talk about the context of the project and the historical continuity manifested by the city, which is embedded in the collective memory of its people and buildings. Every city has a personal soul, formed of all traditions and the living feelings, and in this case Albania has a lot to tell. This country is located in the southeastern part of Europe. Throughout its history it underwent a series of political ruptures. Just to mention a few, within the last couple of hundred years, we had the occupation of the Ottoman Empire, a few years of independence, occupation of the Italian fascist regime, liberation, dictatorship period, and finally, in the early 90s, democracy. All these changes affected not only the lifestyle of its inhabitants, but also the balances between the religious communities. It might be interesting to mention that during the 70s, the communist regime prohibited practicing religion and as a result, the religious buildings were transformed, some of them into sport halls or warehouses. Some were just abandoned, but other times they were sadly destroyed. It was during this period that people could practice religion only behind closed doors, hidden from the public. It came as a spontaneous reaction that immediately after the 90s, the behavior shifted drastically by bringing all the religious action into the public spaces, parks, boulevards and piazzas. Finally, people were free to practice whatever they wanted without any consequences. It is in this particular moment that we want to grasp the aspect of changing from individual behavior into an audible collectivism. This is when the city entered a new epoch of soundscape. Hello everyone, my name is uh, Hust Selhorst and I am an architect and immigrant in the city of Tirana. This is the city where I arrived five years ago coming from Barcelona and I was born in Belgium. Coming from this Central European background, I found it uh, striking how Tirana has such a wide scope of uh, religions. And particularly that there is this really relaxed attitude about co-living in the city. Um, that you have so many mixed marriages, people from different religious backgrounds. Muslim community marries with Christian community, marries with atheist community, and there is no strict boundaries uh, between them. There is no tension about it. In the city, you can find a great proximity between the mosque and the church, um, which creates a very particularly particular situation 
which is the main reason why we are trying to do this project. And that is the um, simultaneous presence of those different views into the public environment. And it creates this set of actions, can be rituals into the public space, can be sound projections in the public space, um, so nearby, uh, happening at the same time. And it creates an urban sense of belonging to each other's activities. It, so it's very educational and it, it helps to kind of, it creates this transversal understanding between the different concepts from Muslim, Christian and Atheist community. And I think that it happens in such an extent as I personally have never been exposed before. And this is why we are doing this project. Hello, my name is Kiris Jone, I'm part of the Kumbiyama team. I want to remember uh, my strongest impression from my first visit to Belize. That feeling of a travel back in time uh, when I took the cable car from the midst of the modern noisy city to the Maricalia back to the fourth. And strangely enough, the thing that stuck in my mind, like the theme of my visit, was the pomegranate. I had the belief that most probably the dimension, the shape of the relation of Belizeans with the fruit in front of the imposing walls of Maricalia have always been the same. And that for me became a theme of mind of that visit. Returning to my hometown, I often struggle to find that theme. It's difficult, it's invisible, and yet again, like many of us, I was brought to believe that architecture is a form of art mingled with science and the notion of gravity that unfortunately serve as a boundary to our imagination. But when I jump forward in my imagination, when I challenge myself, my inner boundaries, and live in the sea of sound, uh, the architecture of those sounds, I can finally identify Tirana Pongrani. It's not a fruit, but it's a vibration. It's soft, it's palpable, yet it's imposing, it's strong, it's capable enough to guide our senses back to the unchangeable, back to something that had stayed the same through the ages, even through the city itself has changed a lot, the sympathy of religious sounds. This is why I feel so deeply immersed in the Kumbinga team, for the first time in my life, I'm able to find exactly uh, what Tirana is about and was about and will be about. Uh, was there when the walls were replaced by Brezhnevka, the communist blocks? Was there even when we tried to mute the sounds during the dic uh, dictature? Is here when around the blocks are being replaced with skyscrapers? And surely enough, it will be no matter what happens in the future. For me, uh, as an Orthodox Christian, being raised by a Catholic uh, grandmother, um, living with Muslim Shia partners, surrounded by Muslim Sunni friends and others, Protestants and whatever, um, the symphony of Kumbina represents the very east of being from Tirana. That's surely my pomegranate. Hi, my name is Pierre Escobar. Um, I'm an architect and I'm the owner of L'Atelier uh, Nomadic Architecture Studio and I'm part of the Kumbina team. And I joined the Kumbina team uh, a bit as an outsider, as a, as a, as a foreign person, um, not being fully aware of the Albanian culture. And this project was for me a way to discover it in a beautiful way. Uh, and to be able to participate in, uh, in what I find a very inclusive project, in a, in a project that um, displays in a, in a respectful way, in a creative way, um, the diversity uh, the, of this country. Um, for me as an outsider, especially coming from Western Europe, um, it, was, um, it was surprising to uh, discover a country which is so near and which has this uh, religious diversity and how it's being displayed in public space without being something aggressive but by just being something that people consider as part of normal life. Uh, these sounds, these interactions um, are just uh, part of the of the urban soundscape. Um, in a way, it's um, 
it's a source of inspiration, I think, for Western Europe. They could uh, learn from Albania to that regards. Hello, I'm Alba, part of the architect group of Kombima. In the realm of Kombima, if you take a walk in the city, you will be surrounded by different sounds, religions and non-religious ones. By living here, you get used to them and they become part of your everyday life. So we thought to share this experience by focusing on the sounds, diversity and their coexisting. We started by creating a common library with a collection of voices, sonants and tones. The close distance between religious buildings made it easy for us to register them. In addition to this, the presence of many construction sites, nearby playgrounds and other urban moments contributed to the richness of the soundscape. In our first attempt, we brought this diversity in an audiovisual experience where the sound composition was in the center of attention while the image tends to create an atmosphere of better and better resting in the background. Further, we started mapping the sources of sounds, scheduling their timetables and carefully deciding the routes to register their different tonalities, dominance, as well as their absence of the open city. a sound engineer, composer, a sound artist, and a part of Team Kombima. Also, I am not really comfortable with the cameras, so I'll let you enjoy the autumn scenery while I ex explain from behind. Um, now for the Tbilisi architecture Biennale, we took this concept further in that the sounds to be used in the installation are authentic field recordings that I made in Tirana in a short given period of time. I made these recordings with two spaced on the microphones, which more or less mimic the way that we hear and therefore make the experience much more immersive and also the space the recording is made is more authentic and identifiable as well. Um, also, the recordings were not made only in and around religious objects, but the town, sp um, the town spaces, the everyday uh, spaces as a whole. This brought about the idea that the music correlation between field recordings will be found almost uh, randomly, you know, in hours of editing, in juxtaposing sounds against each other, like, um, for example, you will find in, in the installation sets um, um, a church choir singing hallelujah in perfect harmony to, to the imam singing um, in, in the mosque or um, the club uh, house music that is in beat with um, the church bells, for example. So... Um, once we had these sound sets, 
and uh, of, of the three main sounds, they are placed in the virtual horizontal plane as uh, as a cross-faded X, Y, Z. But there's also a, a spatial and other differences on the main sound itself in the vertical plane too. This turns the installation into a small sound mixer, basically. Um, with you know musically or, or acoustically related sounds, um, not only it is transformed it into an instrument, but in my opinion, um, soundscape locator too. So, in my hands-on expertise with this installation, I've come to appreciate the cross-religious tolerance not as an imposed concept or a Western concept of wonder, but as a vital and diverse part of the everyday soundscape. Which, as an atheist, it pains me to say. Thank you. Hello, my name is Ami Aviari. I am a software developer based in Tirana. I was the last one to join the Kumbima team and I was tasked with creating a web version of their initial concept. I wanted to mimic the very basic act of walking around the city by offering an experience that could react to very simple actions such as moving your mouse around or tilting your phone with your hand. Our installation, it works like this. Each time you visit our website, you are offered randomly one of our four professionally recorded sound sets. And when you open our website in the desktop or laptop version, after pressing the Begin the Experience button by moving the mouse around, you will experience different com combination of the sounds as if you were walking in a street of our city. And you can achieve the same with your phone, with your Android device, by opening our website, pressing the Begin the Experience button, and tilting your phone in all the directions like this. Uh, to have a better experience and a more uh, immersive uh, feel, I suggest you use headphones and you sit in a quiet place when you open our website. I hope you enjoy it and I hope you get the possibility to come and visit us here. Have a nice day. So we're back. Um, thank you very much once again for for this video and quite an interesting project as said from from the beginning. Um, I would ask the audience who so is who is, who is so um, apologies um, who is online now to ask the questions if any. Yeah. 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 Uh, um, um, you, you, you did, um, as said, a fantastic job from the beginning because, I mean, the, the diversity that you have showed with the reflection on sound is very inspiring for me and I found it very interesting to see it. But before we go in detail of the project, could you, like, reflect on your experience of actually doing the project and performing this project? And of course, you can you can also give a short, uh, short introduction of your school. Pierre, you want to start? Ah, okay, we are going to continue. 
You have to unmute. We have to unmute, I guess, because we're all on. Yeah. Hi, um, I'm Pierre, uh, as you are. Um, I'm the owner of L'Atelier, and um, for me, the, the experience was quite amazing, uh, content-wise, but also in the form. Uh, I think especially, I, I already said it in the video, but as an outsider, uh, I realized uh, a certain uniqueness in, in the Albanian culture that was quite inspiring for a Western European where we see religion diversity as uh, something conflictual. And uh, somehow um, that was really inspiring. Um, and then concerning the formalization of, of this idea, um, we had an amazing team and somehow the eight members working together, uh, each of us, um, flowing tasks to each other and having this continuity and um, instinctive understanding, I think was also um, a super rich experience. Um, maybe um, the girls in Tirana also want to share their experience. Yeah, hi. Um, we are in Tirana right now, <laughs> where everything happens. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we actually wanted to mention the fact that uh, this project, uh, which is based in the city and in this nation, um, this feeling, this atmosphere, which, which is like uh, everyday life for us, and we usually don't even notice uh, this uh, composition of sounds, which happens every day in Tirana, but at a certain point we became conscious of this co-living and of this uh, sharing spaces and common areas with people of different uh, origins and different religions and different communities. So we were trying to think of a way in order to represent this, um, this coexistence actually, uh, in a way which was not banal, because this argument has uh, usually been used also by politics and by different factors by telling that, oh, look how good we live together and how it works. But actually we just wanted to find a new way to represent this idea that it was, was not political, was not regional, was not uh, uh, religious at any way, but still could show how everyday life goes here. And we thought that actually sound composition would be like a good way to represent this uh, coexistence of sounds. Mm. And in continuing to that, to that uh, maybe it's important to emphasize that in this uh, representation that we try to do, uh, we don't try to uh, use it or to uh, embellish it in a way that uh, uh, we give it some uh, political nuances or let's say uh, additional nuances or poetic nuances more than it has, but uh, basically just represent it as it is. And in a way, uh, even the configuration of the sound uh, itself, the way how one sound transitions to the other is exactly the way how you would experience it even on an everyday basis. So as while you are uh, navigating around the city, you could, uh, you can actually uh, hear one sound uh, at its amplitude while it's at most present and then uh, gradually it becomes almost absent or it actually transforms into another sound. So this is um, in a way the coexistence of sounds which in a way uh, presents the coexistence of the layers and the communities of the society itself, uh, as it, it, it does coexist. And it's some, it's sometimes the, the sound experience that we have in our everyday life is sometimes not of a choice. So you hear, you, you walk around and okay, you, you can choose also to have your earphones, but sometimes um, you just uh, go along with it. And it's part of, part of your everyday experience uh, in architecture or, or as a citizen. Yeah, there was also something else that I wanted to add, actually. We thought that it was interesting to grasp this exact moment in time, because as we've seen during history, it wasn't like this before the 90s, and it is like this right now. And we're not sure if this is going to last in the future or how it's going to be. If we're still going to have this uh, mix of sounds and uh, mix of diverse communities or not. But it was important to represent this moment in time. Mm -hmm. It's interesting uh, that you have like this diverse sound sound um, from different parts of the city. But when I was experiencing your uh, project, um, I had this opportunity to tell the truth to say it first <laughs> as a first guy. Um, I I could see that commonness is also existent in this 
videos which are in different areas with different locations. And in most of cases, I found these religious uh, rituals as a backstage to most of most of the v, most of the sound installations. Yeah, the the religious rituals or religious cathedrals bells ringing, and um, it was inter- interesting for me to understand whether it's like very common to hear even in these years these rituals uh, being, uh, going on in the city. This could be uh, maybe an interesting insight to reflect uh, on us, on every uh, society, on, on every context. Uh, basically, because you find noises and colors in every context that represent uh, its own uh, soul, it, the, its own peculiarity. And maybe uh, this could be a trigger to, to look at things or to be more aware on, uh, on what we are exposed to on a different perspective. Mm-hmm. I, mean, yeah, I don't know how it's in Georgia, for instance, that would be uh, uh, an interesting investigation to see yeah, how actually, things meet. Uh, now, actually, when, when I was reading also and hearing you, the other, I mean, we are also uh, post, uh, post-Soviet country and the religious uh, was also similarly restricted to, to, to what you tell us from Albania. And after the independence, we actually similarly to what you are telling, experience this freedom of expressing the religious beliefs. And also we have the similarities of uh, having the different religious groups groups um, in the city. But I'm, I'm, in my opinion, in, in this country, you hear more one or another religious beliefs rather than a mix that you that you have to show. Yeah? So here more is like, very um, orthodox country, so you can you can hear these orthodox rituals, but the ones with the different religions are somehow uh, more muted. So mm, I, I found this experience uh, that you have showed quite quite interesting in that sense. Yeah, this freedom of expressing the religious beliefs and also in the public spaces to, to use this public space. But the interesting thing is how people actually perceive these public spaces when they are. Um, uh, from the different different religious beliefs, but they see like, for example, in this, in this uh, um, uh, uh, gatherings in the public spaces. How do they perceive this? How do they how do they do they find also the common interaction with them, or it's like very separate? So uh, maybe this is one of the highlights of uh, the context itself, uh, the fact that. Um, I mean, so basically before uh, 90s, everything was muted, right? In terms of religion. And uh, right after 90s, everything is easily manifested. But not just manifested in a segregated way. That one appropriates uh, a public space and uses it for its own ritual, but it's actually shared and truly becomes a common ground. Mm-hmm. So uh, we, we show in one, one of our research uh, examples, for example, the square, which is the central square of Tirana. And, and that becomes a ground for, uh, on a Sunday, it, becomes, it could become a ground for a church ritual. And on another Sunday, on another uh, ceremony, celebration day, it can become uh, an Islamic uh, Bayram uh, celebration. So in that sense, um, there is quite high tolerance and coexistence that you can feel it uh, in, the, in, proxi- so in the presence of each other in the, the simultaneous way. Yeah. Uh, that's actually very interesting because I mean this inclusiveness that you can see actually from the pictures that I have observed. I haven't been in Albania. It's very impressive, uh, and sharing the common space uh, with uh, with certain um, objective is also quite quite new and interesting for for me, me to learn. Um, what what I also observed is that your team is like not not all of you are locals. Yeah, some of you have arrived from different parts of the world and started to live in Albania and work in Albania and Tirana. And I was really interested how you, the locals, and how you, the comers to the Albania, perceive, perceive uh, this notion of the commonness that we are talking right now. Uh, well, maybe I can start uh, this <laughs> from a local point of view. Actually, Certainly during the lockdown that we had in spring, as I guess a lot of countries in the world actually, when we were somehow forced to slow down and to hear more what was going on around, we started noticing 
much more the noises and much more the sounds of the city. And during this period of staying at home or living in the balcony most of the time, <laughs> <laughs> I, I could so clearly notice like different kind of bells, the Catholic and the Orthodox one, and different kind of things from the Ezan of the mosques. So just in one street, we have uh, two different churches, one Catholic and one Orthodox, and a mosque, and just a few meters away, another mosque. So this presence is uh, very dense, but at the same time, unless you stop and slow down, you don't even hear it. It's like part of everyday life, and at least for this generation, it has always been there. So uh, their presence, it's, it's just normal. Mm -hmm. Unless when you go somewhere else, or maybe to visit in another country or to live in another country and you, you can hear mostly just one kind of sound, just the bells or just the azan and you come back here. And that's when you realize that this is something peculiar actually. And uh, yeah, this is the point of view from someone living here. Um, yeah, actually that's interesting that from, from a local, local person perceiving it, that you, you noticed that when we, when we went to the to the lockdowns and this was not like very I'd say it's very visible during during the everyday life if I understand that correctly yeah how about you Pierre as a as a comer to Albania um, so it's actually quite interesting, uh, in Western in Western Europe and in actually most Catholic and majority countries we we claim to be secular countries um, and so with this, uh, like, in, in a way, it, it kind of um, expresses a wish to be open to other religions, but in reality, it's not the case. And in Western Europe and in France, for example, most minarets are silent. So in a way, you don't give the same rights to the different religions on the, on the soundscape level in the city. Mm -hmm. And for me personally, as an atheist, um, the, I feel that the sound of religion in Berlin, where I live, is quite aggressive with the sound of the church. Um, and that's also because it's the only one. But when suddenly there is this, um, um, there is this uh, opportunity for different religions to express themselves in, in the soundscape of the city, then it makes more balance. And somehow in Tirana, it's really... Um, expresses a, a beautiful diversity. For me, it's 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 very it's enriching and it's inspiring. And um, I think um, people in the Western Europe should really um, learn more from Albania. Now that we have Georgia as well as the case, we can come there and do our own <laughs> Georgia recording. <laughs> I really hope that sooner or later we will have this opportunity to host you in Lisi. I mean, as said, I don't know whether I mentioned it on live or not, but I will repeat, we would prefer to have uh, this interaction live in physical space, but, but due to all, all the restrictions, unfortunately, we are not able. But maybe next year we, we could do something something interesting in Lisi. Please, uh, please, please give us some kind of invitation. Treat us as an invitation to Lisi. Okay. Uh, in this sense, okay, sorry. No, 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 please. Oh, in, in this sense, since um, we, I mean, we, we are aware that after, in a post pandemia world, uh, we have adapted to a digital, a more digital, a digital a communicative world. And then we have somehow adapted the website, uh, or we have adapted our installation to, uh, to become a, a, a website uh, uh, accessible one. And we have Andy that might uh, maybe go briefly a bit on uh, yeah. how we have uh, come up to up, up to date with the 2020 <laughs> <laughs> yeah well actually I, the next next thing i wanted to do was actually to ask andy to jump in because i mean the most of the projects you know the team the content team is very visible and the people who are doing a very hard work sometimes sometimes get get on the background so andy <laughs> yeah. you, you did you did a fantastic job tell us more about it Thank you. Uh, I, w I also wanted to point out that er everybody worked hard and did a great job. It's not a matter of only who produced the tangible thing, but also who did the background work, who came up with ideas, all the meetings that we had, the brainstormings, the discussions and the things like this. But for me, that was... So 
basically I am a very uh, I'm very into my job and my job doesn't consist too much on doing ar artistic stuff <laughs> I gen generally do business things meaning applications and things like that and I jumped on this chance to have uh, to have a more uh, artistic output of my abilities and it was it was an amazing experience and also a very challenging one from a, a simplicity point of view because we all wanted to transpose this concept that they had in a digital space but the di digital space is a space with much more constraints compared to the real world so we had to take those into consideration and try to try a simple but yet very uh, meaningful approach to the concept so uh, I was asked at the beginning to come up with some idea on how we could how we could uh, how we could present this thing and the first thing that uh, comes into my mind now on the process is the comparison to a fish in the sea if you ask a fish in the sea to to present the water around him, he will not actually be aware at first on what to do because the water has always been there and he has always been immersed in that. So he has basically no special idea about that. But since this year was a very special year and we had a lot of time to contemplate the water that we are immersed <laughs> into, uh, we became aware and I became aware after 34 years of living in this town of the amazing uh, soundscape that we experience here. So, and that is a soundscape of a very moving city enriched with all these real re religious activities that happens on a daily basis and everywhere. So it's basically, this is basically our water. We, we don't really uh, have a special word for that. We don't have a special feeling for that. It's a thing that we experience every day is our bread and butter. So basically uh, we try to do it in the um, most simple way that we know by transposing movements of the hand into uh, variations of sounds. Mm -hmm. And with the amazing help of our sound artist, we, we managed to offer to offer sound composition of an almost musical value and to make them reactive to to the to the sounds and to the movement of the hands so that we can we could uh, have this end product this website that has taken a lot of our time but also we enjoyed it a lot i mean for me at least it was an amazing thing so, yeah. Uh, very nice. Um, I'm just asking the audience to post the questions because we are left a couple of more minutes if they have any. Um, apart yeah. from, um, like we discussed already uh, quite a lot about uh, one of the, the sound installations, but you, um, as I recall it correctly, please correct me if I'm not, you have also done several experiences. It's not, not, uh, not only the one, yeah. So the people who, who will access the web page, they can refresh the page, and every time they refresh it, they will have um, different uh, experiences and different uh, yes. uh, sound experiences. Um, what can you say about the rest? Rest other projects, actually, rest sound sound uh, um, sound experiences. Do they reflect also the same commonness, or they are a little bit different from what we already did? You want me to answer, or <laughs> if you if you want to do it, I'll be happy. Uh, maybe the best. <laughs> well, the, the best to, to answer uh, to this question would be would have been uh, Dritero, in fact, uh, which is a, a sound engineer and composer that uh, unfortunately is, could, could not join uh, online the live uh, session, although he was uh, part of the video. But uh, basically, uh, the, fo the four compositions, um, the four sets of sounds that are displayed on the website, uh, they follow um, a similar concept. Uh, so they bring uh, dif the different diversity of uh, sound compositions in and tr sound transfiguration uh, only by uh, 
uh, the amplitude and the graduality between them. Uh, but they, are, they, have, they follow the same pattern. So they do uh, follow the same patterns of the, yeah, of the source, following the, the source of the sounds. Uh, Alba has been also uh, uh, maybe tracing a bit more the sources of the sound and mapping. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it would be nice to see you from your album. Yeah, so mapping cards and objects around the city. Yeah. Okay, Allah, you don't want to reflect how you were. I'm very like literal. Yeah, I'm not so good in being uh, drawn on the camera and talking, so yeah. <laughs> but it's also important to mention maybe that all the recordings for the sound sets were actually recorded on site. Dritero went around Tirana after we mapped the right religious buildings and after we uh, found out the time shadows about the, all of the sounds uh, experience that we had from them and then Dritero went registering from one object to another for days <laughs> in the right uh, hours in order to capture the best sound possible to reflect the atmosphere of the city. Yes, and also uh, in the beginning we have tested in the research you can see in the project uh, we have we tested to do compositions of the sound so he actually made uh, truly like a music he produced like three tracks with uh, music that were with composition that were that was transfigured pitch transformed etc. But in the last uh, version in the website uh, version uh, you can hear basically field recordings so they are pure few recordings, uh, quite authentic ones. There is no um, yeah, um, ampli uh, amplificator uh, techniques involved in that. Um, actually, that leads me to one, one um, question. Um, maybe before anyone asks a question, I'll ask another one. Um, we, have, we are in a situation of pandemic. Yeah? This is what we already have quite in common. All of us in Georgia, in Albania, everywhere. Um, how does this situation reflect to the common spaces and actually reflect to, to religious rituals that's, happen that's happening? I understand that these recordings were done during pandemic. Is it correct? And if it's or, or earlier, and if pandemic is changing the situation and the sounds are changing in the city? Well, uh, we have actually been working for this project since a long time and we've had uh, recordings in different times. Uh, certainly the pandemic has changed the physical scene of the things happening. Like you cannot really easily attend a big event uh, in, in public spaces on, or in religious objects. But on the sound point of view actually, things are the same. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and, and maybe maybe a bit more amplified since you cannot really access activities indoor. You can now access activities outdoor. So in that sense, maybe uh, because the other activities or the other the rest of the urban density and rashness has decreased a bit since life has slowed down a bit, uh, the, you can actually hear these cult objects more than usual during the pandemic. Mm. Yeah, truth. Um, here's one, uh, it's not a question, but more rather a comment. Uh, Mamika Purda, I hope I pronounced the name correctly. Great project, congrats. I'm curious whether you could record pre-urban pre areas where also informal settlements are located. Yeah. There are super interesting patterns there as well. Um, actually, was it like your first experience or you, you have done something earlier or something with informal settlements? With this, sorry? Informal settlements, oh, yeah. yeah. Well, um, we can say that the recordings have been made not only in the center where the dense, the urban area is quite dense, uh, but also in periphery where you can find, you can encounter more of uh, informal settlements. Um, but actually this is something maybe we can take into consideration to investigate further. Sure. Uh, it could be very, very interesting, interesting yeah, to bring this to another level. <laughs> And we already uh, actually used um, our other uh, member, uh, Hugh Stenhorst uh, from Belgium, another foreigner <laughs> <laughs> that has become almost a local now after five years here. Uh, he also has, let's say, pointed out very often um, 
that sometimes in the informal areas or in the periphery, um, sometimes you can hear more of cult objects, sometimes that can also be quite solely or alone because there is no uh, city noise or city background mm -hmm. in, the, in, in the background, so you can hear that uh, in a more clear way, in a more audible way. But yeah, it's something to investigate maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, could be interesting. Um, another question, do you plan to create sound experiences that are not related to the city sounds? Mm. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, the field is very wide, actually. <laughs> there are a lot of places where we could experiment with kind of uh, different soundscape and to see how it works in different places. Uh, for the time that we had in disposal until now, we, uh, we searched more about the city soundscape, but definitely it would be very interesting to uh, try and see what happens uh, in countryside or in nature, or I don't know, yeah. the possibilities are very wide actually. Yeah. Also the definition of Kumbima itself uh, has uh, more than just a meaning. So it's not just a technical uh, reverberation or returning of uh, sound, but in Albanian, uh, because Kumbima is uh, echo or yeah, reverberation in Albanian language, uh, here it's also a kind of um, a voice that comes from afar, but you can't really avoid it. So it keeps going on in your head, it's like a repetitive, sound keep, uh, that keeps uh, mentioning uh, in your head. So maybe in that sense, we would like to explore more on, on sounds that need to be voiced out. <laughs> it would be nice to also experience that in Tbilisi and see how, 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 com how common we have. What do we have actually in common? Yeah. Um, I thank you actually very much for being with us today. Um, it's, it's said, um, a very interesting project for me. I'm quite sure that everybody will find it uh, interesting. Um, we, as said from the beginning, the web page is already online, so everybody can access our web page by NLG. And on the 47th floor, you can find the project from Combima. Uh, enjoy it because I think this is uh, this is yeah. You know, very good experience. Um, I would like to thank Tim for, um, firstly, for being, getting interested in the architecture biennial, then applying for our open call, and then delivering the project, which, uh, which is already aligned, as I said. I really hope that in, in the future, we will have like physical meeting and we can, we can discuss how we can move forward or present, present your project in a physical space. Um, I would like to end this conversation by wishing you uh, all the best and wishing you to stay healthy and safe. Um, it was a pleasure. And yeah, if you, if you want to say anything, and add anything, please, please do so. And we can close the session afterwards. We would also like to thank you and it has been a delight to work with you. And with also all the team here, and as well as uh, with you and all the partners. Um, and we'd like to thank you also for the, let's say, the, net, the extensive network that you have that was uh, able to present our work, the pavilion in Berlin and the pavilion in uh, Ukraine. And hopefully, um, we will see each other soon in a similar activity. Absolutely. Yeah, and it's very interesting to notice how much in common do we have in diversity. <laughs> Just on a small note, um, the pavilion will be uh, displayed physically um, in Berlin uh, this Saturday in, in the House der Statistik next to Alexanderplatz. Uh, there will be more information online, but it will be a, a great way to have the experience uh, in a large physical way also. Um, so yeah, and anyone who wants to experience it physically, you're more than happy, welcome to join Berlin. Others, at this stage, please use our webpage and hopefully in the near future we'll have to present in physical. Thank you very much, uh, have a nice day and hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.